Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and today we'll be going over how to set up an Xbox gamepad to act as your mouse in DCS World using Input Mapper 1.7. With this, we'll be able to fully interact with full fidelity modules using only our gamepad. Plus, combining this with the Xbox controller layouts I've put together, link in the description, you should never have to touch the mouse nor keyboard once you've entered the cockpit. Or, in other words, we're unlocking our gamepad's true DCS potential. Before we do anything, let's download and install ImpaMapper. For this tutorial, I'll be using version 1.7. Link is in the description. As the name suggests, ImpaMapper will be used to take input from a controller, for example, right stick movement, and map it to something else, for example, mouse movement. Alright, so let's quickly go over how to use the right stick to control the mouse and use right bumper as left mouse click and left bumper as right mouse click in Input Mapper 1.7. So to start off, let's go to Profiles, create a profile. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it DCS. Uh, hit Next. The output device will set this to keyboard and mouse. Hit Finish. Under input device, I like to select the 360 controller because this now gives me a nifty little graphic interface. We then set right bumper as uh, mouse left click. And then for left bumper, I'll set this to mouse right click. Scroll down under macros, let's click on new. Let's go to triggers, let's go to new. We'll go to input, compare value. For the input channel, we'll set this to the 360 controller uh, left shoulder, which will show up as left bumper for some, whatever reason. The comparison is going to be less than or equal to, and I'll leave this at the default of zero. Hit OK. Go to Actions, go to New, go to Mappings, Temporary Mappings, and then we'll go to New, and then set the source channel as 360 controller, and right stick X. Then we'll go ahead and map this to the equivalent, which is under mouse, and then mouse delta X. So for source channel, it's right stick X, and destination channel, mouse delta X. Hit OK, hit new again, and we'll do the same thing, except it'll be for the right stick Y to mouse delta Y, so source channel, 360. Right stick Y, destination channel, keyboard and mouse, Mouse delta Y, once again, right stick Y to delta Y, hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. And now let's confirm that the right stick actually controls the mouse. So let's go to devices. Under player one, we'll select the profile we just created and confirm that we can indeed move the mouse with a right stick. Now, if you note, even though I'm not touching the stick anymore, the mouse is drifting. So uh, to correct this, let's go ahead and do our best to deselect the profile. Oh boy and then select none. There we go, we have control of our mouse again. Let's go to profiles, select the profile we just created. Scroll down to input state modifiers, click new, go to axis interaction, radial dead zone, and then set axis one as right stick Y or whatever, right stick X, right stick Y. So I'll go to 360 controller. In my case, since right stick X is the first one, I'll set it there, axis two, 360 controller, right stick Y. And then I'm going to use the default of 0.1. You might find you need a bigger dead zone than this. So if you do, just go ahead and slide this to whatever value is required. But in my case, I'm going to use the default of 0.1. And I'm going to keep soft edges checked. Click OK. Let's go back to devices and select the profile once again. And now there is no more drifting. And on top of that, I can still control the mouse with the right stick. There we go. Now let's test and make sure that right bumper acts as left mouse click. We'll mouse over to profiles and right bumper. There you go. That is the left click action. And then we'll hover over the profile and then use left bumper to test right click. And there you go. Another thing we will have to double check is that our macro is working. So to do that, hold the left bumper and then attempt to move the mouse over the right stick while holding left bumper. If you find your mouse is still moving despite holding the left bumper, what you need to do is you need to close out Input Mapper. Then you probably will need to go into Task Manager and stop the process. So end task. And then relaunch it. And now 
you should find that the macro is now working. So again, mouse is moving without pressing left bumper. Now if I hold left bumper, it should no longer be moving. And that's pretty much it. With Input Mapper 1.7, you should now be able to interact with a full fidelity module as complex as the A10C2 without ever letting go of the gamepad, as long as you also follow my Xbox controller layouts. Once again, album link is in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you really liked it and would like to see more of this kind of stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Tune in next time for some more DCS World tutorial videos. Till next time, guys, have a nice day.